Ardea was the king of Persia, brother of Cambyses and son of Cyrus. In 522 BCE, he was the most powerful man on the planet. But within a few months, he was gone. In his place stood a man named Darius. Here there are two historical narratives. There's one narrative officially endorsed and promoted by Darius himself after he secured his place on the Persian throne. This narrative says that the Bardia on the throne of Persia was actually an imposter, some random guy pretending to be the real Bardia. The real Bardia, says the narrative, was actually executed by Cambyses at some time during his reign. The narrative makes the additional claim that both Darius and Cyrus descend from a common ancestor named Achaemenes, making them part of the same Achaemenid dynasty. Herodotus endorses this narrative, relaying the story of a contest between the best of Persia's nobles that eventually leads to Darius winning the throne by merit. The other narrative, which is the one endorsed by modern historical consensus, says that Bardia was the real Bardia, and that he was the legitimate successor to Cambyses. Darius was a usurper. This narrative also states that Darius was an outsider to the dynasty of Cyrus, and that the supposed common ancestor never existed. Given that Cambyses' reign was much better than the conventional narrative purports, Darius's dubious claim that Bardia was summarily killed and then impersonated by an imposter looks a little ridiculous. The inevitable conclusion is that Darius was illegitimate, a violent usurper. Even at the time, many Persian subjects didn't buy Darius's story. Within the first year of his seizure of the throne, areas across the Persian Empire including Egypt and Babylon, had risen in revolt against his rule. Luckily for Darius, he still had the army on his side, which allowed him to put down many of the revolts against his authority within a couple years of rising to the throne. He traveled from Susa to Babylon to Egypt. Everywhere he went, he re-established Persian authority. By 518 BCE, the Persian Empire was again unified under the undisputed rulership of one king. During these early years, Darius also worked on crafting his public image. He created inscriptions which promoted his narrative about the rise to power and connected him to the royal dynasty of Cyrus. This was important for ensuring that his rule, as well as the rule of his successors, would remain stable and legitimate. He also married Atassa, the daughter of Cyrus the Great, and originally the wife of Cambyses. After he unified the domains of Persia, Darius worked on expanding the empire yet again. There were still frontiers for Persia to breach, and Darius led the Persian armies in the process. He went east first, fighting wars against the nomadic peoples of the steppe, those who had killed Cyrus years before. He also pushed into the Indus River Valley, conquering the whole region by 513 BCE. The region was a lucrative conquest among the richest in the world. Although Darius was a great conqueror in his own right, he is more remembered as an administrator. He was the architect of the Persian Empire, effectively creating the systems of government and finance that would sustain the empire for two more centuries after his death. He formally oversaw the appointment of the satraps to oversee the administrative divisions, which improved central control over Persia's satrapies. At the same time, 
Darius continued to respect local forms of government and authority, guarding against future revolts. He also established a tribute system, which effectively stood in place of direct taxation, and was made proportional to the wealth of the tributary regions. The tribute system effectively curtailed the perception that the Persian government was oppressive by limiting direct interference by Persian authorities in the daily life and routine affairs of taxation. Darius also commissioned many building projects throughout the empire. He created a new capital for the empire at Persepolis, building a grand palace complex along with all the necessities for a great city. In Egypt, he restored several temples and constructed new ones. Perhaps his most important construction project was the completion of the Canal of the Pharaohs, which connected the Nile River to the Red Sea. Along with his conquest of the Indus River Valley, this canal secured an unbroken line of maritime trade between India and the Mediterranean. If Trajan was Cyrus, Hadrian was Darius. Darius's conquests were not finished. In the early 500s, he led a massive army across the Hellespont, the first time a Near Eastern Empire had made significant moves into Europe. Reportedly, he used a massive pontoon bridge, the famous Bridge of Boats. Once in Europe, he subdued the Thracian tribes after fierce fighting and pushed into Macedonia, stopping just before reaching the main Greek cities. He also crossed the Danube in an attempt to subjugate the tribal peoples there, but he was unsuccessful and retreated to Thrace. By this point, Darius had already brought the Persian Empire to its greatest extent, but he wanted more. Specifically, he wanted the Greeks. Darius's quarrel with the Greeks, specifically the Greeks of Athens and a few other cities, was the issue of the Ionian Revolt. In the 490s, Athens had sent assistance to the organization of a revolt of Greek cities in Asia Minor, which were under Persian authority. This revolt was swiftly crushed by the combined Persian naval and land forces. The only thing Athens had succeeded at was, in effect, pissing off the king of kings. Darius decided that the Athenians and their associates had to be punished and in 490 BCE, he sent a maritime expedition to land in Greece and march on Athens. This expedition had with it a man named Hippias, who had been tyrant of Athens before the establishment of democracy in 508 BCE. The Persian commander hoped to install Hippias as the new ruler of the city, with the promise that Athens would then become a loyal subject of Persia. This, along with Persian possessions in Macedon, would provide a staging point for a potential war against the rest of Greece, followed by an incorporation of the Greek mainland into the Persian Empire. The Persian expedition landed at the Bay of Marathon, at a point about 25 miles from the city of Athens. They were met immediately by a smaller force of Athenian hoplites. The Athenians knew the terrain better and took proper defensive positions to contain the Persians. Numbers are unclear, but it's likely that the Athenians were outnumbered at least two to one, possessing about 10,000 soldiers while the Persians had over 20,000. The Athenians were waiting for the arrival of the Spartan army, which had promised to give them aid, but 
was delayed by a religious festival and would not arrive for a couple weeks. Their ticket to survival against this larger Persian force seemed to be delay. However, something changed before the Spartans arrived. The Athenians attacked the Persian positions at Marathon. First contact between the heavily armed hoplites and lightly armed Persian infantry proved that the weight of the Athenian line could overwhelm the Persians. The Persian center buckled, but was reinforced by superior Persian numbers. The battle was eventually won when Athenian troops on the flanks managed to envelop the Persian army, causing a rout. The Persians ran back to their ships, managing to retreat in mostly good order. Athens had survived. Greece had survived. It was an incredible victory, an underdog city-state defeating the greatest empire in the world. In the aftermath, the Athenians sent a runner to cover the distance between Marathon and Athens and relay news of the victory. Guess they couldn't spare a horse? He got there, reported the victory, and then died. Upon hearing of the defeat, Darius was frustrated. He began preparing for another invasion of Greece far larger than Marathon. This was to crush the Greeks, once and for all. The people who had inexplicably managed to defeat Persia. They would not do so a second time. Before he could lead the expedition himself, though, his health began to fail. Darius died in 486 BCE, having ruled Persia for almost four years decades. On his tomb were written the words, I am Darius, the great king, king of kings, king of countries containing all kinds of men, king in this great earth, far and wide.